We've owned this land for two years now. Two years last September is when the sale went through and we we turned up with the, the two caravans in an empty field. And it's been six years since I left the city and started caravanning and ended up here. The biggest things that happened on the first year of being on the land were flattening the two levels and building this cabin just in time to welcome Rhys, our baby. A year ago, Rhys was four months old and we were living in this cabin and had the caravan next door and we were using the kitchen and the toilet in the caravan and we still are we still are living in this cabin with the caravan next door we had survived lockdown in wellington and happily come back to the land i will admit i was struggling mentally basically the first year of reese's life was a bit more challenging than i expected and that was a bad patch i started meeting finally meeting more mums in the area part of the problem was that i knew no one no one around this area no other mums it was all very new also i was getting bad cabin fever hayden would be busy doing work around the place and i didn't really have anyone to talk to i felt stuck in the cabin and i have learnt that i'm someone who likes to feel like you're going forward or progressing that's why i suited the caravan lifestyle and i have traveled a lot in the past so if i feel myself starting to get into a negative frame of mind i will change something in my life and feel like i'm going forward but with a baby <laughs> You're kind of stuck, you're stationary, and I did feel like I was going a bit stagnant. So it was not a good time for me. Luckily, my brother came and moved onto the land with us. He bought a tiny house and set up, and it made a huge difference to me. Just having someone that I could call on for if I needed to pop to the toilet or do a couple of chores. Or just have a, a random chat through the day it made a big difference to my overall mood i've also loved seeing the relationship andrew has with reese now which would not have happened if he'd lived further away the bigger changes we had at the start of the year were building the small shower cabin i feel like that was our third or fourth upgrade of the shower since we've been on the land and so far the best and we've still got it very similar to to that change Hayden also added a proper entrance with a gate so that when his event season started we could lock up the land if we go away unfortunately last summer's event season was all cancelled as COVID finally reached New Zealand so it was a very different summer to what we had planned i thought i would be caravanning around a lot more and seeing him at events and yeah hayden's business basically was put on pause and he found a job locally for over summer other changes on the land we flattened the house future house site a little bit and got a geotech uh, report done where they drill holes down to check how deep the piles will need to be driven for the house to sit on and Hayden started fencing in my food forest because we were aware rabbits were around funnily enough we never ended up completely enclosing the food forest it's half done and since that's happened we've got some chickens and part of the food forest has become the chicken enclosure and then I've enclosed the middle section to prevent the chickens from getting at my fruit and vegetables. And yes, we got chickens. These are actually my first ever pets. My family had pets, but I've never had one myself. So yeah, these chickens are my first. 
I got six fertilized eggs. One wasn't fertilized. Two of the chicks unfortunately became ill and I ended up with two hens and a rooster. And we've been getting eggs for a while. Funnily, funnily enough, just those two chickens are giving us too many eggs. I've had to start giving them away. And these chickens are very comfortable hanging out with us. Reese have, has really tried to befriend them with not a huge amount of success. He is trying to also feed them, which also doesn't really work that well. The annoying thing is they do keep getting into the cabin every single time I forget to close the baby gate and sometimes they will leave little gifts behind and I do actually plan to get some more fertilized eggs soon and experience the process again. I also started improving the look of Hayden's messy workshop area by painting the exterior of the containers so they are a more muted color that will blend into the landscape more. I didn't finish as much as I wanted because it became too hot and I'd been warned that the paint would bubble or it wouldn't attach correctly to the surfaces. So I had to pause. I was waiting for autumn and autumn just slipped straight into winter and then it was too wet and cold to paint the containers. So once the rain has finally stopped in spring. I will have a short window to paint the, the exterior of the containers and hopefully finally merge that part together a bit more. I have been warned by a local farmer that we probably will have another hot summer. And because it was such a hot dry summer, we ran out of water. We had been just living off one 15,000 litre tank, which is really not enough for the five of us. Five because my brother was living on the land and then Jack, Hayden's son, uh, moved onto the land for this year. So my brother bought his own 15,000 litre water tank and we paid to get water delivered and filled up both tanks. I am in the process of looking at getting another larger, much larger tank to collect the water from the future home because that roof will collect a lot more water than this little cabin. And then the awning we had connected to the caravan that had lasted a decent chunk of time. I think the sun affected it and then with a little bit of wind it was completely destroyed. So Hayden upgraded our awning. We had had a tiny one off the door of the cabin, but we had found that if there was a little bit of wind when it rained, the rain could easily come inside the cabin. It was just a bit challenging. <laughs> so instead we upgraded to a full length, beautiful awning with some decking and it's been fantastic. It's extended our living space and in summer we spent every evening eating outside. It was a game changer. <laughs> and then a lovely local lady in the area gave us her old caravan awning and the combination of those two is, is, is just been, it's been amazing. <laughs> it's been a great setup really. I then finally, finally did one caravan trip, only one in this last year. I really, really had planned to do a lot more caravan trips than I, than I did. And I survived with Reese. I had been nervous about how it would work out. And I think that's what stopped me from doing other trips. The awkwardness of how to have a shower when you have a baby that uh, wasn't standing. Like I just couldn't figure out how to work that. And I was always nervous that Reese would wake up and be crying while I'm trying to set up or pack up the caravan at the beginning or end of the trip. So that did actually, it did cause me to hesitate and pause. But I started planning plenty of trips. I just, it just never actually happened. So now that Reese is walking, I feel like caravanning will be more manageable. And I'm already planning 
future caravan trips. <laughs> But as you might have noticed, this channel really has become more about off-grid living than caravanning. It has taken me a while to wrap my head around the change. So if you are if you started watching this channel when it was all about caravanning and you're still watching now, thank you. <laughs> thank you for sticking around. And I do hope you are enjoying watching us living on the land. And then we had a few things break on us. Our diesel heater broke right when it was starting to get cold. We were also struggling with the power as it became more overcast and there were five of us using our four batteries when we really had bought the kit when we thought it would just be the three of us and Reese wouldn't be using much power at all really. So then our generator unfortunately broke as well. So it was, there was, that was a really challenging part when we really couldn't use much power at all and it was the type of weather where you wanted to use some power. So Andrew started the process of getting his own solar and then Hayden bought another generator which I actually like more because it's a lot quieter. Then Hayden made a small cabin on the land from start to finish just throw it together as you do it's become his office <laughs> and then restarted daycare which has made a huge difference to me i will admit i had massive mother's guilt when i first started daycare i even had a bit of a cry the first day i turned up because in my mind i thought daycare was all about me but it turns out that it's also good for reese because he's around other children and he experiences new things there. So it's, that has been a relief to me that it's not just all about me, it is also good for Reese. And it's been a huge positive change for me, just having that time to be me again, to having that block of time that I know is coming at a set time I don't feel guilt about asking someone to look after Reese and racing around like a madman and it, it means I can focus more on this channel. That was the plan though. Funnily enough, I have found that Reese has been sick about 50% of the time since he's been in daycare and they were very cautious with any illness at the start because COVID was in the community. So he was home for 50% of the time. <laughs> but now things are changing, they're relaxing a bit, so if he has a runny nose, he can go to daycare, it's okay. I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things now. I feel like with my channel, for the last year, I've just been making sure the channel stays alive, that it keeps getting new content. And now that I've got a bit more headspace, a bit more time, I'm able to start planning a bit more and hopefully manage to grow a little bit because I've stopped growing. I think it's been the change from caravanning to off-grid living and a few people thought I had stopped creating videos completely so I think YouTube stopped sharing my channel with uh, regular viewers who weren't subscribed. You might have noticed I've started experimenting with shorts a little bit just because YouTube really is pushing shorts. Bit of bad news, I had nearly finished another video down to just the last little bit and then my external hard drive stopped registering. I couldn't open it at all. It's with an IT specialist today. I haven't heard back so I feel like I've lost that footage and that video and then I think the last month's footage it's, it's a little bit painful every time I think about it. So that is the downside of uh, external hard drives and storing large video files. Hmm. And as I mentioned a year ago, YouTube has become my main job. It's doing the YouTube and looking after Reese, and that's, that's it right now. And because my channel has kind of stagnated a bit, it hasn't really grown. I'm not earning as much through YouTube. 
So if you do enjoy these videos and you do want to, um, yeah, help out a bit, I have a Patreon page where you can contribute a little bit each month, or I have my Tributors page where you could contribute a one-off amount for either an item that we need or uh, a general general contribution. <laughs> but either way, thank you, thank you so much for watching my video still. It really means a lot. And then we finally got building consent later than I had expected, so we were already running late. And then we got piles driven into the land, ready to put the house on top. And then the next stage was building the platform of the house and then putting the walls up. The scary thing is we, we kind of need to get this house watertight. That means a roof on and builders wrap around before Hayden's event season kicks off mid-November. So I really feel like time is running out. We've just had so many rainy days and then yeah. Anyway, just a bit of stress. <laughs> and then yet more things broke. Our Califont and our water pump broke for our shower. They all seemed to go at the same time. We had a few hard frosts then. And then Hayden's car unfortunately broke. So we've only just found him a van recently. You really, really need your own wheels out here because we're, we're 20 minutes from town. Yeah, you just, you can't survive without a vehicle. Other fun projects on the land has been the fencing. So I can't see Hayden's mess. I, I don't know how often I look at that fence and admire it. It's just, it's created a divide between the workshop storage area and the living area. And it just stops, has stopped Reese wanting to go and touch all of the dangerous items behind that fence. We've also fenced off the stream and put in a gate so now Reese can kind of roam without me trailing behind him, worried that he'll hurt himself. Hayden and Andrew built a small cabin for Andrew to store his solar equipment. He had bought a kit because we had been struggling with power. And then funnily enough, we have been dithering and, and procrastinating about actually installing it. <laughs> and then the solar company came out to the LAN to interview me and Hayden. I will include a link to their video. And that's about it. That's, that's our year. When you look at it like this, one compressed video, it does seem more than when you're living it day to day. So thank you so much for watching my channel and I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing a lot more videos.